Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back with you here. It's been actually a little weird missing you the past two weeks as we took a bit of a break and then I was preaching in the main adult service last week. So uh, it's awesome to be back here with you today. I promise I didn't forget about you. We're actually kicking off a new series today called Moods. And before I tell you what it's all about, I have a question for you. And that is, what's your favorite song? Take a minute, pause the video if you need to, and think about that. I know it's kind of a tough question, and if you're anything like me, your favorite song probably changes all the time. It changes as you grow older. It changes depending on what your mood is. And for me, my favorite song changes all the time. It's one song if I need to get pumped up. Uh, I used to have my favorite skateboarding song and it would just get me like wired so that I could go out and skate and probably hurt myself. It's another thing when I'm feeling sad, another when I'm angry, and maybe you're the same way. You've got a favorite song that speaks to you whatever mood you're dealing with. You've got a song that fits each one of those feelings. One that matches every mood. One that reflects the emotion you might be experiencing right in that moment. I think it's a pretty amazing how songs can make us feel. They can make us feel happy or mad or sad. Well, that's what our series is about this week and for the next four weeks. It's about our feelings, our emotions, our moods. Maybe you heard, hear the word emotion and think, oh yeah, I know what emotions are. They're happy, mad, sad, Or maybe you hear the word feelings and you think, oh, I'm totally familiar with that word. I'm always hungry. That's a feeling, right? Well, sort of. See, we all feel a million and one things every single day. And while hunger is definitely a feeling you get in your stomach when you're hungry, what we're talking about today is a little different. We're talking about things you feel in your mind. Now, Chances are you might not always know how to talk about what you're feeling. You know you're feeling something, but you may not be sure exactly what to call it because feelings can change fast. And often what you're feeling goes beyond the feelings you have words for. Sometimes you're more than just mad. Sometimes it's the your mom grounded you for the week mad or your sister stole your sweater mad. Or your best friend didn't you invite you to the party, mad. Or maybe it's your parents are in a fight again, sad. Or you didn't make the team sad. Or maybe it's you scored the winning goal, happy. Or you got the first chair in the orchestra, happy. Or you finally got your own room, happy. See what I mean? Sometimes what we're feeling is so much more than just the words we have. It's so much deeper than just happy or sad, or mad. It's kind of like this. Do we have any painters out there? Any artists in our mids? If we do, then you know exactly what a palette is. It's one of those things that looks like a plate, and you put your thumb through the middle of it, or that's what I imagined it to look like, and you put a bunch of paints on it. It's that tool that artists use to hold all the colors they need to create whatever masterpiece it is that they're painting. And on it, they don't usually have just the primary colors. They don't only use the basic red, yellow, and blue to create a detailed picture. They have so many different combinations and shades of color to paint with. And honestly, this is a lot like our feelings. We are dealing with an entire artist's palette of emotions. Initially, we all become familiar with the three primary emotions. We all start with those basic words when we talk about how we feel. We feel happy, mad, and sad. But as we mature and grow older, the palette gets bigger. We start to have access to so many different shades and combinations of feelings. We get all of these moods and emotions we've never experienced or learned how to express before. But they're in our palette now. And the more feelings we feel or experience as we mature, the bigger our palette becomes. Suddenly, we're like a professional painter with all the feelings we have on our palette. 
Now, I'm no artist, but I can tell you that I've felt all sorts of emotions throughout my life. I've used so many different colors that I should feel like an expert painter at this point. And maybe you can relate. Maybe you've experienced some or all of these emotions too. So what do we do with all these moods? Here's what everyone in this room needs to know. Emotions are a good thing. Even the bad emotions. Feeling what we feel is actually a great and healthy thing to do. But at some point, we all have probably struggled or been told we struggle with managing the many different moods we have. And that looks different for all of us. Maybe you tend to avoid letting your feelings and emotions show because you don't want to seem weak. But here's the thing. Having feelings doesn't make you weak. It makes you human. Or maybe you struggle with your moods because it feels like they'll last forever. Like the way you feel now seems like the way you will just always feel. You're sad and can't figure out how to get out of it. Or you're happy and you hope it lasts forever. We've all been there. We've all thought that we feel now what we will be feeling forever. Or maybe you don't think much about your own feelings, but you see people's worlds revolve around theirs. Your parents, your friends, your coach, your older siblings, that guy losing it in the viral video on YouTube, everybody around you seems to be obsessed with what they're feeling. Maybe you've said or done something out of the ordinary because of what you were feeling. Maybe it was something you regretted. Maybe you yelled at your parents when you were angry or threw something at your siblings when you were frustrated or stormed out of the room and slammed a door when you were overwhelmed. Now, typically, these aren't things you usually do or say. That's because like a lot of us, you got caught reacting to your feelings. Like we all have at some point, you got stuck letting your emotions tell you what to do. In other words, you let your emotions be the boss of you. And honestly, we all do this. We all struggle with controlling our feelings instead of letting them control us. After all, it's hard to say no to our feelings when they're so strong. It's hard to take control of our feelings when our feelings seem like they have all the power. See, the problem with this isn't that we have feelings. There's nothing wrong with having a feeling or even developing a mood. The problem starts when we let our feelings become the boss of us, when we let our moods tell us what to do. The thing that I love about Jesus is so much of what he teaches is helpful for everyone. Whether you consider yourself a Jesus follower or not, there's something you can take from what we're going through today. It's something really cool that Jesus said during his time on earth that I think can help us. Something that shows us how to control our moods rather than letting our moods control us. And here's what I think is cool about this. Not only can we trust what Jesus says about our feelings because he is God himself, but we can also trust him because he was human too. Jesus came to earth. He came as a human. And that means he experienced what we experience. He knows what it's like to feel all the feelings. So when he talks about emotion, we can trust that he knows what he's talking about. So let's take a look at what Jesus had to say to a group of people about feelings. And we're going to read from Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to 23. And then he added, It is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, slander, pride, and foolishness. All of these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Jesus was talking to a crowd of people when he said this. And in that crowd of people were Pharisees and other teachers of the law. These were people who thought they knew exactly what they had to do to be right with God. 
They knew the laws or the rules that had been passed down to them inside and out, and they thought living by those rules made them good. But Jesus, well, he lived in a way that looked completely different than the Pharisees thought he should. He was less concerned about what people were doing and more concerned with what was going on inside of them. He was focused on what was happening in their hearts. That's why Jesus started here by pointing out that there's so much more to our actions or words. That long list of stuff he talked about here, the evil thoughts, the pride, the foolishness, deceit, the greed, those things start from within. They are an overflow of what we feel in our hearts. And when we aren't paying attention, what we feel in our hearts can take over and become the boss of us, controlling what we do and say. Because of that, we need to take our moods more seriously. We have to pay attention to how we feel because how we feel motivates how we act. Our moods come out in our words, our actions, our choices, and more. Now, I get that this isn't going to be easy. We not only have to identify what we feel, but we also need to pay attention to how it makes us act. How are we supposed to not let our feelings be the boss of us when our feelings are so strong? Well, I think Jesus understood this and knew how hard it was. He knew that whether you're 11 years old or 103 years old, this was going to be a struggle. That's why Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. See, this feeling stuff is hard, and Jesus knew that. And that's why he offers to do it with us. When we're feeling something that's intense, Jesus tells us to come to him. When we're tempted to let our mood ruin someone else's mood, Jesus tells us to come to him. When we're not even sure what we're feeling, Jesus tells us to come to him. When we're feeling like our emotions are out of control, difficult to understand, or simply making us act in ways that we don't typically act, Jesus tells us to come to him. Maybe you're thinking that this all sounds great, but you're not really sure what it looks like to go to Jesus. Well, going to Jesus can mean different things to each of us. Maybe for you, it's trusting for the first time that Jesus is with you. Maybe for you, it's reading your Bible or praying or singing worship songs. It could be talking to Jesus directly about what you're feeling, the same way you would talk to a friend or trusted adult in your life. Or maybe it's simply remembering that Jesus knows what it's like to feel big feelings. You can be comforted that he's right there with you now. And here's what I want you to remember. When you feel like your moods are controlling you, Jesus will give you rest. He'll give you help. He'll give you a break from the weight of your feelings. He'll help lead you in a better way. We can go to him with anything that we're feeling because he's not scared of our big feelings. He wants us to trust him through them. He's a better boss than our emotions will ever be for us. So often, it feels like our feelings are the boss of us. But here's what I want you to know today. Because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. So what does that mean? What does it look like for us, for you, for me, to take a step back from letting your feelings be in control? What does it look like to not let your emotions be the boss of you? Well, here are a few things you can do to start. First, try to think of the top one or two emotions that you have the hardest time with. Think of the ones that end up motivating what you say or do when you wouldn't normally say or do those things. The ones that end up being the boss of you. The truth is, it may be difficult to do this in the moment. It takes practice. And if you've already acted because of your emotions, Well, give yourself some time to think about why you said or did what you said or did. Ask yourself, what was I feeling just before I did that? Pay attention to the moods 
that you were experiencing just before you acted. That will help you recognize it the next time you're feeling that way. Secondly, talk about your feelings. For some of us, this comes super easy. We love to talk about our feelings and what's making us feel those things. But for others, it isn't fun or easy. For some of us, talking about our feelings feel, well, awful. I'm not saying we need to pour our heart out about our emotions. I'm just asking each of us to identify what we're feeling, to check in with ourselves, to name our moods. If you're mad, say, I'm mad. If you're angry, say it. Feelings are real, but sometimes by talking about it, we discover there are a few other feelings attached to that feeling, and it helps us gain more perspective. Thirdly, be kind to yourself. And this one is so important. If there's one thing I want you to know today about your feelings is that they're not bad. And feeling them, talking about them, or experiencing them isn't bad either. Remember, we said this whole managing our mood thing wasn't going to be easy. So be kind to yourself when you don't always get it right. Don't beat yourself up about how you feel or how you act because of how you feel. Give yourself the chance to do it differently next time. To not let your feelings be the boss of you. To take it to Jesus and ask for his help. Because remember, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. Thanks, guys. And we will see you again next week as we continue our four-week series on moods. Let me just close with a word of prayer. Jesus, thank you for being there for us. Help us to feel our feelings and bring them to you. Help us to know that you want to lighten our load. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.